hello it's Sarah and guess what I'm conditioning clay I'm gonna make some a dragon's eye for you guys I'm gonna do a tutorial <clears throat> I was playing yesterday and I think I've got it down so I shouldn't take too long basically um, I had made some I did this tutorial with uh, Chris Capono and you can I'll put the link for that in the description box um, she does it on I clay lessons I'm not sure if clay lessons is even still a site so we'll have to see but there are lots of um, YouTube videos you can watch as well on dragon's eyes and so oh the first ones I made were on these bezels and I think I have really got it down now where I'm kinda I don't want to say perfecting but I know what I'm going for and because these were in Chris's style I changed it up a little bit to kind of make them more my own style and to do that I basically just went to let's see I went to Pinterest and I put in um, dragon's eyes so and then I take screenshots of, of the pictures that I see um, oh these are actually let me zoom well no you can see fine I, I want to say these were because Lynn's crafts Lynn she does polymer clay tutorials and videos and um, she paints the actual gems that you use for the eyeball um, and I'm gonna do something a little different I use paint a little bit of paint and a little bit of mica powders but I believe these are um, uh, printables that you can print out on the computer and then adhere them to the backs of your gems with glossy accents or something so I think that would be an awesome way to go um, and then I just look through whatever's there on Pinterest this was just a castle well, that's so cute this one actually was was where I got my inspiration for the ones I'm gonna do today this is a graphite pencil drawing and I just love these spikes and the way that she or let's say Victoria yeah has used different textures for the different oh the different oh see look that's pretty much let's see that actually looks like they might have used this as inspiration too I don't know but anyway um, so this is where I kinda have gotten my inspiration for the one I'm gonna do today um, so for to make a dragon's eye basically you're gonna need clay and I'm gonna make a pink one today because I haven't made a pink one yet I used a half a block of Primo just to make I think you could do it with one one brick of this you can make the small dragon's eye no problem you'd have enough but I just want, didn't want to run out so I've conditioned half a block of Primo by Sculpey and this is just Primo um, let's say fuchsia but it, it definitely has like an iridescence to it I don't know it's a beautiful color uh, but yesterday I made these the purple I used purple mixed with a little bit of white gold glitter and this is a Primo accents color and I used red which is pomegranate I think again mixed with a piece one bar of the white gold glitter and you get like kind of a you can see the glitter on there um, but you don't really see it once you know on the piece so it might not be necessary to do that I mean you can kind of see some glimmer in there um, I actually used cookie cutters to kind of establish my shape but then I just started tweaking it like this is this one and this one we're basically using the cookie cutters and yeah I pinched up the nose on this one a little bit this one was the cookie cutter and this one had an accident when I um, patinaed with the black paint the clay hadn't sealed up against the uh, marble the glass gem and the paint slipped through there and kind of went underneath the eye and it turned it black so this is a shark's eye now but 
I'm, you know, I'm glad that this stuff all happened, you know, off camera. I got to play and decide what I wanted to do. I'm really loving the spiky technique. Um, so I think I'm going to do that, although I have these gems. I got a bunch of these. I want to say, where was I? But they were $2 each for Swarovski um, Hot Fix Crystals. And these were at AC Moore, I'm pretty sure. And I got, you know, pick, tried to pick some colors, but this one is the one I'm going to use. And let's see if it has, this says Hot Fix Combo. I don't know if it's a color. Volcano, it's called. And it's kind of got this red, yellow, pink coloration to it. So I'm going to put them, I think I'm going to embed a few crystals in this one. But I'm definitely going to show you the technique to make these spikes and uh, use a cookie cutter. Because I, like I said, I used a bezel, but you don't need to use a bezel. You can use, and you can, you don't even need a cookie cutter. You can just use your X-Acto knife or a blade and cut whatever shape you want to use. Um, but, and then this one was a little bit different. Instead of making a double layer of lids, which it still kind of looks like there's two lids, but this is just a small strip of clay that I put on top and bottom. So there are so many variations that you can use. Use your imagination, let use inspiration from Pinterest or other places, and um, make it your own. Um, I loved that Chris used swirls and, and leaf, nature, um, elements of nature, because, you know, if it's a lizard or something, you know, he's camouflaged in there, and this is tone on tone, and I really like that. Um, <clears throat> I have another little one that I did. <coughs> Excuse me. This one is, again, tone on tone, but it's a small Altoids tin, and I have one of these in the oven right now and I just put paper inside and I made the eyeball green. Now this one I'm going to get a little funkier and try and change it up a little bit. So the first thing you're going to need is clay, half a block of clay, um, and an eyeball. So these are basically the little glass gems that you find in the, um, probably in the planting department at AC more like for if you want to do floral arranging and these are used to put in the base of the vase a glass vase and they come in all colors and sizes and I've used these in mosaics um, in glass mosaics for the centers of my flowers but I had these pink ones and I think I'm gonna even use one of these uh, there's yellow green and they come Sometimes you'll find a wonky shape like this one. I think that would be super cool as an eyeball. It's, a, it's more of an oval. And some of these actually have an uh, iridescence to them. I try to find the clear white ones. Because if I were going to do this tin, for, for instance, and this I bought on, I got it online. And you can order them online, or um, I use Altoid tins, recycled Altoid tins. But this gem makes a nice size for something this big. So you're going to have a nice big eye and have, you know, you could still put, you could put a small one. It would be fine, but you're, you know, proportion-wise, I think you want to work with the size gem for the size uh, critter that you're making, right? So for today, I think I want to make... Should we go ahead and make a medium one in pink or a small? I really, really like the small. I think I'm going to make a small. I'm not going to use the pink eyeball today. I'm going to use this one, and I'm going to make a small one. Now, all I did to this, and this is a small gem, I happen to have the Posca paint pens. I'm sure a Sharpie would work. I'm, not, I'm not actually not sure. But basically, you just take your gem, and here I've done a little bit of a triangular, or actually, it's like a diamond shape with some stripes. Uh, this one, I did the line with a circle in the middle, which I kind of like. Um, I had one of these has, or this one, 
This one has a circle in the middle and then I just put little dots all around it. But basically it's just as simple as making a straight line. Now this is a bigger one so we can go a little thicker. Okay, and then I think I'm going to do a circle in the middle and uh, do I want to do something else? I'm going to do a couple of rays coming out and that's it. Let that dry. Set it aside and let it dry and then you have this one has iridescence on it, see? I try to find ones that don't have iridescence. All right, so now my eye is ready. This one was sitting and drying. So I'm going to push that all aside and get the pink clay. Now, the first thing you want to do is condition your clay. And you just need to warm it up, mold it in your hand. But if you have one, a pasta machine is a great way to go. It'll just save you time. I am impatient. And I love having a pasta machine. And you just kind of pinch it off so that it's small enough to fit in the pasta machine and run it through 10 times you know keep, run it through fold it in half run it through just keep going and that way the clay breaks down and everything inside there gets all mixed around and it it gets soft and you can start to play with it in your hand Oops. I guess the ups truck, my dog likes the ups truck. All right, so the, the, what I like to do for the first step to make this is go to the thickest setting on my pasta machine, and that's going to be number one for me. Number one. Some of them are probably ten. Some are, I actually only have nine, but so I'm going to flatten this out a little, put it through, and this is the thickest setting. So it looks like I have an air bubble here. You don't want air bubbles if you can help it. And we're going to texturize this clay so really you don't have to worry about uh, marks. Um, I'm going to put it through one more time. There we go. I'm going to take my small, I guess this is a leaf shape, and I'm going to cut out a shape set that aside. I like to take it off, kind of smooth it because the cookie cutter has a, a little where it connects. It gets weird and I'm going to point this end of it. I'm going to cut this off. I don't quite want quite that much of a tail and point this. I don't want to lose the edge. I like the square edge but as I'm squishing and, and connecting things, it will get squished. I'm going to try and point this down. So shape it how you want your eye to be. And I kind of like this. It reminds me of like a yin-yang or something, doesn't it? it? There's some kind of shape that's like this. I don't know if it's a yin-yang or some type of a water symbol or a symbol, right? So that's my eye shape. Now. Um, let's see, I actually am going to turn it this way. So this is kind of the bottom. And this is going to be the top, the brow area. I'm going to take this sheet of white clay that I've rolled into the thinnest setting. And this is a uh, dirty white clay. It's fine because we're going to put color on here. And I'm going to use, I have a cookie cutter again, um, but you can just cut a circle shape. Actually you could probably use one of the uh, gems and cut around it but I'm just going to use this because I have it and this is the thinnest on my pasta machine, the very very thinnest and it's just there from yesterday when I was playing. Bring this back over so this is pretty much how I want my eye to go this way I'm going to center it though, ish, center it ish, right? 
and then I'm going to use mica powders. Now mica powders are beautiful, colorful powders. They're um, flakes of mica. I don't know the science of it, but see they're kind of like a powdery substance that you can rub on the clay and it sticks. So I'm using Aztec Gold and this one's called Blue Russet and these are by Pearl X, but I also have Perfect Pearls, which I know you can get these. You can get them both at Michael's or your local craft stores. And I'm going to take this gold first and I use a brush. I like to use a brush, just a small, uh, something that you can control. And I'm going to brush this down the center first. And when you squish it, oops, when you squish the eyeball onto there, it kind of distorts, so we might not see as much of the color as you think. It's just kind of tricky how this happens. But I only put the gold right in the center, and then I'm going to use this blue russet on both sides. This color is so strange because it looks, what, like a burgundy, right? But they consider it a blue russet. And I'm kind of going to push into the gold, too. Hopefully I'm in the shot. Barely. I'll zoom in when I start doing things that you need to see up close. But for right now, I think we're good. Just blow that. I think I'm going to go back in with the gold. Now, once you've applied this to the raw clay, you, the clay isn't sticky anymore. This, the powder takes the stickiness away, so it doesn't actually want to stick as much, but there, it, it, it's kind of, I brightened it up. Just in the center. <sighs> then I'm going to stick that eyeball right on that area. So straight up and down, how I want it to go. And you're going to give it a push. So it does distort. And it doesn't really hold it. It's just getting it into the clay. Kind of pushing it down into the clay. We're going to do a couple more things to it and then I'll pick it up and kind of get it back into shape. This clay that we cut the, the original shape out of, I'm going to cut this little area and just use this. I want to make the little, um, I guess the tear ducts. So I, I cut a piece of clay that's going to go up against, now this is important because remember the, uh, the paint went down into that area. So I want to make sure I'm pushing up against the glass. I'll zoom in a little for this. So you want this to be nice and snug up against the glass. I'm going to do one for the other side. And this is just proportionate toward to how you want it to be. I kind of curve it so that it goes up against the glass and then just pop it in there and hope for the best. I'm pushing it though up again and so you can see the glass moving a little. And these are kind of that little part of the eye in here. So these little parts, that's what I'm doing right now. All right. Then we're going to take the same width of clay. And I want to fill in this area a little bit because when I put my eyelid on, I want it I don't want it to sink down because there's let me show you the proportion. Look at all that proportion that I I need to fill that in. Okay? So I'm going to take the same width of clay and just make a, like a, kind of a, the same shape as the eye almost and curve it around the eye. Let's see. And just set it down and we'll blend that in in a minute. I'm going to do another one. So I want it to be um, 
you can't really see what I'm doing up here but I'm just taking this and I'm gonna make I'm gonna make it rounded maybe that'll fit better that's too um, but I, I need this thickness that's really what I'm going for is the thickness butt it up against this one's too So see how that fit right in there, up against the eye. I think I want to shave a little bit out of here. Clay is such a great medium. You can do what you want with it. Yeah, that's going to fit snugger. So we're just snuggling in the eye and making sure that it's um, adhered. And we didn't lose our shape. We can smooth this down a little bit. Don't want to um, have too much of it. And you know it's great. Like here's, I didn't talk about this in the beginning. I only have a few tools out, but I do have some clay tools that I'm going to use. Um, I got pretty much the beginner Sculpey set, I think. I don't know. But these are like ball tools. Maybe it was a ball tool set. I don't want to be zoomed in too much to make blurry. Um, but I like to smooth things with this big one. So now I can just take that and kind of smooth it down a little bit so that it adheres to the, the base of the eye. And this pink is not um, soft. Yesterday I was working with this red. I'm gonna, I'll show you maybe um, later, but this is so soft, so I don't know. I think it's, uh, you know, it depends. Primo tends to be the stiffer. Maybe that is just plain Sculpey, but I am basically just smoothing this down. Doesn't look very smooth, but once you put the eyeball, I mean the eyelids, what I'm trying to say, I'm gonna lift this up now and kind of make sure my shape is how I want it. So I didn't lose too much on the edges. I like that. It's not too distorted is what I'm saying. And smooth anywhere that got distorted. Got some mica powder on that. There's a little ridge there. But basically I think we're good. Don't worry about your eye right now. We can get, we can clean the eye off at, at any amount of time. The few, I can't even talk. Any number of times you can um, do that, but don't worry about that now. So the next thing we're gonna do is create the eyelids. And I'm gonna take this piece of clay and go down now to about halfway. So if that was one, I'm going to five. And just put it right through. And now I still have, what I like about it is, is the, the ridge. I'll show you. I might be able to go down one more. But see, you still get that ridge. And that's what creates... I'm going to go down one more. This is... I believe it's a 7, but I'm not sure. So this is what I like. Is you get this ridge that creates your eyelid. It's this part, what I'm talking about, the flat side. So to do this, sometimes it might help if you just took a, another cookie cutter shape, right? Because these curves are basically what we're going for. I'll zoom in a little bit more. And I'll try to do it down here. Good. Um, so what I want to do is create an eyelid. And this is going to come across my eye a little bit on top and a little bit on bottom and it's going to connect somewhere along here and here so I'm going to let's do I'm going to do the bottom that seems way too um, thin but let's see yeah way too thin so I don't do that um, it, I want to keep, I want to try and put this right there. So it's just going to go, how about that? I don't want to cover the eyeball too much because then you're, 
too squinty. I think this is going to be good. I'm going to keep that. I'm going to cut it right here. But I think I can just smooth this out. Sorry, my eye itches. But see how now we have a lid shape right here. That's what I want to make right here. Because this is all able to get covered up and um, smushed down. This is too thin. So I'm just going to take this clay. I'm, see, I'm trying not to move so I stay in the shot. Let's move it. Let me smooth this down. So see how it doesn't really connect? So we're just going to take our thumb and pinch a little bit, not too much pressure. And this clay is pretty stiff. It does not want to move. So I'll take my little ball tool. And that actually really got it smooth that time. So I know you can't see. Let me try to hold it like this. But see how that got it all smoothed together? So now I have this. Just keep using... I think there's plastic ones of these. Let's see. This is the basic. Uh, I have plastic. Like this and this. So let's see if I can get it to do it with this. And I just don't want to interfere with that lip of the eyelid. That's what I'm most concerned about. I think my thumb is actually going to work the best in this instance. And I want to get this back to having a point because I'm going to put some spikes up there. So, see what I'm doing? I'm just smoothing it. But see, look at that eyelid. It has dimension, right? and everything's kind of smoothed down and we got to try and do the um, top lid or the bottom lid so let me take another try at this because it worked last night of course perfect <laughs> when I was doing the practice ones so you kind of look at both of them right and decide so I want it to be much see I think I keep going too small it's an eyeball in it situation so that's all I can tell you just eyeball it ah no pun intended now this could be a little I'm gonna cut this right like that and try to slide that up to fit up here because I don't want my little tear ducts to be too big I don't like them to be too big so I'm just squeezing I think I like that that shapes good so I'm just gonna smooth this down now to connect and if we lose some of the outside shape we can always take our blade and um, fix that up but right now I'm just connecting all this together. I love this color. All right, so now we have an eyeball. Take it off. Whenever you try to pick clay up off the table, use your blade. But see, it's a little messy. I'm going to just use my fingers now try to smooth everything out hopefully I'm in the shot push it back together and pinch you can just reshape it I don't like that ridge there I'm going to flatten it out and pinch it next thing we're going to do is add some texture actually no I want to put one more lid You'll see. And this could be good this way. I don't even need another lid, but I do 
I like it that way. So this is still a little kind of the ball tool made these weird lines on it so I'm just using my thumb and gently rubbing those away or smoothing them I should say kind of losing the shape of my eye a little bit but not a ton I can fix it I want it to go I'm following the line of the pupil to get it straight how I want it and this is going to be a little spike up here so that's going to be okay just bring it to a point all right good I like this shape a lot okay now we're going to get take this down even thinner now we're going to go to pretty much maybe the thinnest one kind of like this uh, the white that I did and I'm just going to take all my pink get it back and this is much warmer I mean much uh, harder than some of the clay I've been working with but I'm just using my the warmth of my hands and then I'm going to put it through the pasta machine and get that last little sheet and then I'm going to texturize and then we'll add the little spiky so I know this is long but I like to show you in real time I'm going down to this is probably nine so that's a nice sheet of clay and let me think I think I am gonna continue this I'm just gonna make a couple and use those to kind of get the shape that I want, right? So I'm going to take my X-Acto blade and because this is not the exact shape but it has the main curve so I could basically lay it on there and I want to go I think right about there would be nice. So I have another, I just like the dimension that that gives, and I'm going to try and do it. I want to cover more area, so I'm going to bring this one, hopefully I'll have enough, I don't know, but you give it a little distance. connect it up over here pretty good I don't love how this I think I'm just gonna smooth it down I'll smooth that down but that's what I'm going for that dimensional eye wrinkles right so now we just have to smooth all this out again and this is a much thinner piece of clay, so it shouldn't be as uh, hard to do. And we're going to texturize all this, so get it how you want it. But this side, I can basically just pinch it with my thumb, and it blends in. If the clay was softer, it would work. Oh, this blending technique would work much better, but it's so stiff, this clay. Don't got to use this. You know, I, I have to be honest and say this wasn't what was going on yesterday. I think I was cutting, 
<clears throat> much closer to the size and I didn't have to do this a lot at all this blending but wasn't happening yesterday so if you cut your clay to fit you won't have to blend it this way which is I'm actually a little I'm happy about it because I've not done this very often and it's kind of neat to try it and see what happens So I'm kind of, I'm getting more and more distorted though with the shape of the, uh, of the piece. Hopefully I'm not in, uh, we're, we're still in, um, focus. This doesn't seem like it's even connected anymore. All right, let's see. You can kind of, <clears throat> let's see what I have. I have I have a lot of tools, so I'm just going to go around it and kind of try and fix that side, make sure it's all kind of squared off on the bottom instead of pinched. But I think that's looking fine. I'm going to leave it, let's see, put it straight. This could be a little big. I'm going to cut this. It's so bumpy there. All right, but now we're going to add some texture. Now the one that I just did that's in the oven, I'm doing it similar to this. See this? kind of scale line, lizardy looking uh, pattern. That is a uh, texture sheet that is on my desk somewhere. Right here. It's by Makins, and it doesn't have a name. Wait, no, 2003. But it's basically a fishy scale looking thing. But for today, I'm going to use this X-Acto knife, and we're going to make our scales or our eye look textured by using the X-Acto knife. And all I'm going to do is use the back of the blade and make little bricks right now. On the, um, on the eyelid itself, I'm just going to make brick lines. Then I'm going to finish them by making a brick line and they don't have to be the whole line, just an indication. And then when you patina, then I go in between. So you're alternating, just like a brick wall. But when you add the patina to that, all the paint goes in those nooks and crannies and it really gives a cool look. So I'm gonna do the same thing on the bottom lid. I'm, I'm pushing a little hard because this clay is a little stiffer, but I'm rougher than most of you would be. I'm very rough. I don't know why. I don't do anything gently. Because I'm, I'm impatient, so I feel like one and done. Then I'm going to go in between each one. If I could see, I'm kind of... All right. So that's the first, <clears throat> this has a little crack that I see, but I'm going to texture that. So what I have is these cool Essen Pearl tools, and I'm really not sure what else to tell you to use other than these, but something with a curve, maybe a straw. You guys are very resourceful and figure stuff out like this, but this is um, the Etch and Pearl tools, and I did order this. This was from a class at Polymer Clay Adventure. Sydney Holt, I think her name is, she was using these, but I use these to make the little texture, and I'm just going to use half of the circle first. So I'm going to start at the edge of the top eyelid and push half circles into the clay. Can you see that? And I'm giving it a good push 
then I alternate then I do the second row I do the same thing with the bricks I go over the little valleys so you're alternating the peaks and valleys trying to I come as close to the edge as I can I do that on I do two rows on top of both lids then I finish it off with the medium and Is this the medium? It looks pretty big. But again, alternating and giving some good pressure. These are kind of taken over too, so I'm making a whole new row. We're going to put the spikes in there anyway, but see how that's all textured now? And flip it and do the same thing on this side so I'll go away and come back and that'll all be ready and we'll be ready to do our little spikes okay it's looking pretty good you're gonna need a stylus for the next step because we're gonna make holes basically these holes and you need to use a little ball tool to do that so I have a couple different sizes I'm looking for this one this one's a little small, but we're going to make a ball of clay and then you're going to push a hole in it. And that's where our, we're going to stick our little spikes. And for this one, um, I'm going to use uh, the gems. And I think I'm just going to push them into the clay, maybe down in front. I'm not sure I'd really like to, though. Um, but I think I'm just going to do fewer spikes. Like I, I cut the edge. I cut the corner of the clay and got that looking good. So there's still time to tweak anything that you want to tweak. And we're going to put some spikes on here now, just little ones. So you're going to roll out some clay. Let me come back up and show you what I'm doing. So basically I have the same color clay, all one color. I'm rolling out a snake. It's about like an eighth of an inch size snake I think and then I use my fingernail and sorry I mean they're kinda they're gonna get grungy but you just wanna make a little that's too small kinda like can you see that so once I get a few I'll show you what I'm gonna do so I get that then I'm gonna pop it on here in position and then we're going to push a hole into it. So I'll show you what we do. Let me, I'll zoom in. I just forget, you guys, well, that I'm zoomed in and I don't want to do that. But all right. So see, it's just right there. I put it into position on kind of like towards the back of the eye. And I'll put three. And. I think that one's a little too big. Maybe this one. <clears throat> and this is all relative. You decide what you want to, um, what size you want to make yours and, you know, all that stuff. So I have three balls there. You can see those very well. So I take the stylus. <clears throat> I'm going to use kind of a, a, it's not the smallest one I have. And I'm going to, Hold, try and hold this so you can see exactly what I'm doing. And I'm going to go into the center and push. Center. And hold your, hold your eye so that you don't distort too much. Just give it a little even pressure and you'll make a hole. So you see how I did that? So there are actually holes there now. That's where we're going to put our spikes. I want to put a little one up front. I kind of thought, this reminds me of a bird. I have birds, and birds have nares, and I just want to put a little, kind of like a nostril up here. I'm going to use my tiny little uh, ball tool and put a nostril. I don't know if it's a nostril or not, but I think it is. 
and then you can add other texture little just balls of clay that um, you can flatten out I'll show you how you do that I'm just gonna put a couple little they're almost like little wart looking things this won't get round it's kind of not stamped and then I take this big ball tool and just press it down onto the clay but it gives it a flat see it and it's all monotone so you can't see it that well I'm gonna put one spike down here I'm gonna put a spike underneath too just cuz I feel like it but that's a hole see the hole because we are actually going to put clay in those holes. I want to put a few more balls on here. Just balls that are going to add texture. And I just flatten those out with a ball tool. I'm going to put a smaller one. I want to put the gems. So I'm, I think I'm going to put the gems along the top of the eyelid. So I'm going to put this one right here hopefully I'm in the shot I'll zoom up a little bit because I don't want to and I'm going to use a different ball tool and see what that does so it, it makes it a little more indent indention more indention is that a word all right so to make your little spikes you're going to just take a ball of clay about the same size that you used maybe a little bigger this is going to be way too big a little bigger than the balls that you put down. Get. I always start with a ball and then I just start rolling it flat and then make a point. But we can always tweak the points. And I'm going to start on this far end and it fits. So I and you keep pushing like you just push push it in the hole. You can twist and push. And really what you want to do is make sure it adheres that it touches on all sides of your holes on all sides of the hole so that's it basically you have a little so I'll show you that again I'm making a ball of clay first put it down roll a log and then just pinch the tip but you're gonna fit that into the hole push it in twist kinda twist it much bigger but that's okay and then I'll try to make the uh, last one even bigger I think it's too big I'm gonna pinch it off so make a little log and stick the log in the hole and kind of twist it in there make sure it touches all the edges of the circle because that's what's going to adhere it and we can point pinch the tips at the end but see it touches all, both all the edges of the circle so we're gonna do another one I think this is gonna be too big you can kind of make it into a teardrop if you want and have the point ready to go but I, I think it's just as easy to create the point after the fact it's just because you, you got to kind of squish it in there so you got to push and your point your tip gets distorted anyway so it's it's silly to go to all that work now it looks like I actually broke my ring here I don't like that the ring of um, clay kind of broke right there but my spikes look good. I like it. We're going to put one down here. And then I'm going to try, and this is something I didn't do yesterday, embedding the, the gems. But I do think it would look kind of cool with a couple gems up here. And because they're Swarovski, they can just be baked right in the oven. And I bake according to manufacturer directions. Um, the directions that are on the clay pack and I'll show you that in a minute so I stuck that in that hole and then I'm just squeezing the tip to give it a little point but make sure everything is um, touching the edges of the little hole that you made 
so that's good I like it a lot I think it's adorable I'm going to grab my gems and open this package I'll be right back 